The information I'm about to say is going to be most likely repeated throughout the video just because of, this was an afterthought narrating this part. But you'll see that I have timestamps here. And that will take you to certain points of where I'm doing those actions. But once you get to that point, I'll also have a link to matches up to the description saying where I learned it from. Uh, because I couldn't find one video that taught it all the way through. There were some that were close. But I jumped between a couple videos, and that made life a lot easier for me. I felt like the two people I listened to really brought it together for me um, when they were speaking themselves. At the end, in the timetable here, or index, whatever you want to call it, you'll see it says extra. That is information that I put in there that I thought was helpful. But really, by the time you get to the end of the video, and if you followed everything that I followed, that should get you to a good start. Uh, if there are questions you have, put them in the comments. Maybe I can help with them. Even I am still having trouble with certain things, but you'll see my game played towards the end. I did get some things working. Otherwise, uh, I hope this helps out. And I should mention I am using Unity for this. Out of all the ones I looked at, Unity is what I decided to go with. So let's see. we got the main character. All right. Projection. or the, I don't know what any of this stuff means. So cool. All right. Sample scene. Save scene, save scene, add new scene. Select scene asset. We need a ground. All right. So I got in. That seems to work. Don't save, let's close that. Facebook game room. Oh, yeah, I did actually. You can check different things when you're installing. I did pick that. Unity okay. Hub. Let's give it a shot, it's still there. Okay. Learn, play in edit mode, game objects. Oh. All right, prefab to getting started. Let's try that out. Start. Hey, there's a blob. So these tutorials for someone who doesn't know where they really want to start or maybe even know how to start, which is the category I was in, I'm not sure I would recommend them. I did go through them. I did watch them. There are things in there that I did find helpful, actually, but not until I started creating more. So if you want to do this, not a bad idea to know it, but you are going to be missing some building blocks beforehand, uh, unless this is something you're comfortable with. I don't know how to C-sharp program. So that is a holdback for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put links that match what's in the description on where I went to YouTube-wise to figure out where to start or where I was at that process. Some videos I actually went back to after I watched them. So I'd start with one video that somebody had up, then go to another video, then run into a part where actually going back to the first video is what I needed. Uh, so I'm going to place those on how I got to where I was, and then at the end of this, I'll have the, I don't even want to call it gameplay, but I got more than a blob to go across the room, which was very good for me. I was very happy about that. So I went and checked out some videos and stuff, and I realized I'm in pretty deep water here. Uh, there's so many different ways to make a game, but... I'm going to give it a try anyway. So I'm not going to do the tile method in 2D gaming. I'm going to actually have a canvas. So I saw in one of the videos I watched. And if, let's see here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Somewhere in here. There we go. Let's flip this over to pixels. There we go. So 7680 by 2189. That's two wide screens wide, basically. And I'm going to do a canvas, or try to. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. This is just to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to just real quick. So my ultimate goal here is really just to be able to get a blob from one end to the other end. Um, it never works out for me very well because I get a little too picky sometimes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a floor and a foreground. Um, 
the floor is going to be, I don't know, I'm just going for like a circuit board look. Uh, nothing too fancy. I actually spend more time on it than I even intended on doing. And then the background, just some gray with, I'm um, going to put some uh, red squares in and stuff just so, you know, if it does turn out, we can always do some lighting effects or something. So even though I'm just trying to get a blob to go from one end to the other, I am kind of putting some future thought into it also. As I'm doing this, I actually kind of like how it's looking. Uh, I, I do like the retro look to it. I flipped the floor uh, horizontally in order to give me a ceiling to just save time on that. Uh, when I saved it, I ended up saving the background and the ceiling as one and then I save the floor as it's separate. I'll probably end up going back and saving them all three separately because if, uh, you'll see at the end of this video that I do have the floor and I can make the character go from one side to the other, but I am gonna work on uh, floors above and below and I'll wanna have to edit these files to do that. But other than that, uh, this is, Mike mentioned I'm going for the canvas uh, style instead of a tile style. Uh, be honest with you, at this point and even now, I still don't a hundred percent understand all of it. Or that's not even a safe way of saying it. The canvas was just easier. I just drew a big canvas. Where if you do a tile, it's almost like like Mario Brothers. Where if you saw my previous video where I talked about how I wanted to make a game, which led into this, I used Mario Brothers as my inspiration. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to copy Mario Brothers, and I like the canvas idea. So maybe someday I will, actually maybe I'll try to do um, blocks that look like circuit boards that can be added together. If I can, I'll make a sprite sheet and uh, make that available, which is something I learned a lot about while doing this video. But hopefully uh, this part becomes useful and we'll just keep going here. All right, Unity Hub. Let's see if we can import I don't know anything. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. That's probably the best title I've ever come up with. Okay, so I have my PNGs already made for the foreground and the ground. All right, so assets, scenes. Let's try this. What do we have here? It's in the project area. So we got create, import new asset. There we go. Well, all right. Let's try the PSD file. Let's see what happens. That is huge. That is awesome, but that is huge. Everything I always read is you should put everything to zero. So let's do zero. This thing is huge. Let's go out. That was not supposed to be that big. There we go. That's that's not so bad. In fact, this looks like it's the camera here. That's awesome. I'm going to get rid of it, but that is awesome. And the reason I'm going to get rid of it is it didn't separate the items. I want... Let's back out. Look at that. It's moving everything around. Awesome. All right. So I'm actually pretty pumped about that, though. So let's go uh, insert new asset. Let's go back in there. Let's do the foreground. I should have probably just highlighted both of them, but I'm just happy I'm getting this far. Uh, let's get a new asset and let's do the ground. Sweet, all right. If you're wondering why I'm so excited, I'm just really pumped that that actually kind of worked. I don't know where the foreground went. And maybe it doesn't matter. There we go. Hmm, that was weird. Okay, so... Let's do I don't know if I'm supposed to do this, but I'm I am going to I am going to separate it. So, let's go foreground and let's go ground. There we go. And it lined up. Uh and you maybe noticed I don't you might have noticed when I did this. Let's go in here real quick. Unity game. So here I have the foreground, and it's hard to tell in here, but this is just not the bottom here. It's actually the whole thing, and the reason I did it that way was I was hoping it would line up that way. Uh, when I do my thumbnails and stuff, and I do those uh, 1920 by 1080 for the videos, I do everything in that. That way, because I know where I want it placed, 
and when I start putting things together or I'm doing some kind of transition where maybe my palm button symbol goes in or something, I don't want to have to move it around. I, I use Camtasia. I don't want to have to move it around in there unless that's specifically what I want. I just want it to be where I designed it in Photoshop. So you can kind of see the drop shadow on these, how that is the whole size there. But Okay, let's close that. So foreground, ground. I don't know. Was that supposed to... Let's keep those in the same folder. There we go. Okay. Order in layer. I can never remember that. It's back to front. Somebody said like a painting. So if you're painting the back, we're going to call that zero. I'm going to call this one one. Okay. So far, so good. Main camera. Don't know what I did just there. Okay, so we can zoom in and out. All right. Perspectives for 3D, so we're going to keep it on orthographic. Okay. So right now, I feel a little better. I think this is where they're going to... Here, let's zoom in a little bit here. So this is where they're going to walk. I don't want them to walk right on top of this. Otherwise, if I did, I would just click on ground, which I'm on. I'd hit add component, I believe physics, and I would do a ridge, rigid body. And that should give me a collision area. You know what? We're just going to... Rendering. No. Physics. There we go. We're just going to make it a rigid body for right now. Um, use gravity. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, why not? All right. All right, so now we need a character. So here I'm just importing another asset. I'm going to import my palmbuttons.com logo, the joystick. All right. It ends up not working as a character. I, this is that point where I'm like, all right, let's have a blob. And instead of a blob, we'll use this logo. Uh, I end up leaving it in here, though, because it's later going to actually be one of the tiles I jump on um, and use for collision detecting. So I'm just going to fast forward through this part real quick. So after we get through doing the character here real quick, which turns out not to be a blob because I always overdo everything, which is why I have so many edits in this. But we will jump into the gameplay in that. I am going to also put an extra, we'll call it index, in the front of the video of where I import the character. And since I don't have that part in this video, um, it, that way you can go ahead and watch the videos. The videos that I watched to do this are actually so much better than what I did. It was just, I'm hoping this is, the video itself is kind of an index of where to go in those videos. Uh, there's three videos I went through, two from the same person, one not from that person. But together, and jumping back and forth from the two different people, is what got me this far. And from here, I actually finally, at a point where I've tried this in the past and just... I gave up on it because I didn't. I was missing parts, but this this helped a lot. I'm hoping that this video helps you out a little bit. One of my problems was I couldn't find a place to really get started until I stumbled across the videos that I have in the description. I did have to rewind, pause. I was constantly doing things like that, but I do I do think it gets easier as you go, and I do suggest sticking with it if it's something you really want to do. There was a couple times where I just tried poking through on my own. You can probably tell from the edits where all of a sudden things jerk ahead. That's because there'd be 10 minutes of there me goofing around, uh, not knowing what I was doing, just wasting time. So I watched the videos. There's a lot of good videos out there, but unfortunately, unless, unless there's a way to connect the dots, they don't always work too well. Um, but the, I felt like the ones in the, that I have in the description work pretty well because I went from not knowing anything to what you're about to see in, I hate to even call it gameplay, because it's, um, it's not necessarily gameplay, it's me moving a character around, but I was going for a blob. Uh, it's something 
Uh, and when I say blob, I don't mean like a moving viscous blob. I meant like a circle going in that I could move up, down, and around. Um, I did get a character that can actually jump, and even though the ducking doesn't work, uh, I do have the collision detection on it. But as you'll see, I do apologize. I don't know why when I was doing the screen capture, the voice gets very fluttery and stuff like that, but it, it's still understandable. I mean, well, just as understandable as I am anyways. But yeah, here's uh, the so-called gameplay. Okay, so I can walk left, right, jump. Um, you'll see I put the collision detection for the floor a little bit down from here to here to make it, give it some depth. Um, one of my logos for the website is square, so I used it, and you'll see if I walk into it, collision detection, it's a little goofy when I flip around, he does hit it there. Um, I can jump, walk back forth, I jump up. You'll see he ducks when he jumps, I just, I just did that because I thought it looked neat. Um, but the collision is still set to where his head is. If, his, if he didn't duck, his head would collide here. So you'll notice like when I jump, it looks like he can't jump very high here. But right now, just considering I thought it would be a blob just going down, I'm pretty happy with how far this went. Um, I can duck and go under this. I can't get the ducking to work. Um, I don't know what it is. I can get the character to duck, but it jumps up and down really erratically. Like it's constant, like I'm constantly tapping the trigger. Um, I do not know C-sharp, and I'm trying my best to read it and figure it out. I just can't get that part. Um, I don't have camera movement yet, but I think that's what I'm going to work on next. But yeah, there it is. You'll see he's slowing down. I'm hitting the down arrow when he slows down. That's because I had it where, when ducking, the movement's slower. No, it doesn't make a lot of difference here, but... And this character is just, you know, just my character to play around with. I'm going to try to work out the animation and stuff before I um, spend too much time on another character. But yeah, I might, uh, I don't know, I might try something where there's a multi-jump, maybe open up the ceiling, put another level, and maybe put a drop level before, below that and uh, work from there. So a couple things I didn't make pop-ups for or anything. Uh, in the future, I'll plan better. That was actually a lot harder to edit the stuff than you would think. Uh, I did ditch a lot of stuff because I did have a lot of areas I just wasn't doing anything. Uh, but some things are like uh, in the Bracky video in the description, uh, the video number two, at timestamp 205, there's add animation, 335 animation speed, and 5.30 animation triggers. And I did not get that in here. I had such a hard time with that myself. I mistyped some things. Still having crouching issues in the vi in the game, like I mentioned, if the video play. And because of that, I didn't want to make the video worse when really all this is is just a really giant index to go look at the videos I mentioned. But with the three different people I have, I was able to do what I have and actually know where my next step's going to be. I'm just deciding, do I start from scratch uh, now with some of the cleaner graphics I have, because I just threw some of these graphics together, or do I continue with this one and see where it goes? But otherwise, I, I hope it's helpful. Uh, if anything, it's a good index for me, though, to go back to. But uh, if you do try doing it, good luck, and I hope it turns out great. Thanks for watching.